Well, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission has not approved the first physical Bitcoin ETF after more than three years since uh, the filing first entered the regulatory pipeline. Earlier, Lorian Gamaroff, who's founder of Baggy Moon, provided his view on the ruling. I'm actually pleased that it didn't go ahead. Uh, Bitcoin is still immature as a technology, and um, it has uh, a sort of issue where uh, it wouldn't be able to scale rapidly in case... Uh, the whole world decided to start piling in uh, and considering it as an alternative asset. Um, so uh, it being uh, approved by the SEC as, a, as an ETF where uh, institutional investors perhaps could start buying in, um, that would have created a lot of excitement in the market. And I think people would have then been scrambling to acquire Bitcoins and it would have brought the price up rapidly. And I think that would have created a lot of um, you know, uh, hype uh, unwarranted hype. So I'm pleased that it, it didn't go through. Um, there were uh, very uh, real reasons uh, for that, uh, which I guess we can explore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What kind of activity are we seeing in uh, this market, first of all? And is there enough of an understanding of the market and the kind of investment potential there is to be garnered here? Well, uh, Bitcoin is an alternative asset in itself. Uh, it's very much like gold, if you think about gold as a commodity. So, uh, uh, it, it, although it is quite difficult to understand at this mm -hmm. stage. So, uh, people are thinking about it as a you know, hedge against inflation, as a, a store of value. Um, but uh, it being complicated and uh, uh, technical, uh, a lot of institutional investors and traditional investors don't, uh, they, they don't have access to, to that sort of uh, product yet. Uh, but again, an ETF uh, at this stage would have been too early. And, I, and I, I, although I, us in the Bitcoin community would be quite excited one day when Bitcoin is thought of as a respectable, responsible uh, investment. Absolutely. Well, looking at that ruling, is it more so than a setback for the industry and the market or more so a stepping stone to getting those potential oversights sorted out? Because one assumes that there is, as you say, a lot of room for improvement in those areas of concern that were highlighted. Yes, well, uh, given uh, what the SEC, uh, uh, the reason why they disapproved the, this ETF in the first place, those aren't problems that will go away. Uh, Bitcoin, uh, and one of the reasons why Bitcoin is interesting as an alternative asset is because it's unregulated uh, and, and won't ever be able to be regulated. It, it's not a commodity that is issued or that exists in a tangible way. It, it, it can be traded in a global, uh, global way. So uh, it's a stepping stone in terms of, of mainstream looking at, at it uh, in terms of, of investment rather than uh, as a shady medium of exchange where you can you know, buy drugs or, or whatever it is. So I think uh, these sorts of stories are bringing it to the, the collective consciousness. Uh, uh, giving it airtime in a, in a respectable way is good for, for Bitcoin. It means that we can move away from its, its, uh, its sordid past. Um, but I don't think that uh, uh, it, it will be easily approved. There are other ETFs right mm. now that uh, are, are in line to be either disapproved or approved by the SEC. But uh, it's quite unlikely that uh, any of those problems will have gone away. I was going to ask you because you've got uh, two others that are sitting in uh, the waiting line there uh, for registration. Uh, are those then dead in the water as you see it for now at least? Yes, I think so. Uh, it's unlikely, again, that the, uh, the SEC, who, who is going to play a role in approving those, will then uh, decide suddenly that uh, Bitcoin is uh, something that can be regulated and there can be surveillance, which is what they, they said uh, yeah. they, had, they had an issue with. Uh, how much of a challenge being posed by uh, you know, the general um, shadow cast over financial services and the industry as a whole. You know, how much of a, a stumbling block does that pose for the ETF market uh, making progress the way it wants to? You're talking about I'm, traditional... I'm sorry, the, um, the cryptocurrency ETF market making progress as it wants to. Yes, uh, there's no doubt that eventually these sorts of products will be developed um, and quite likely not in America. You know, there are other markets out there. Uh, other countries have different sorts of regulations. Uh, but uh, Bitcoin is its own thing. And, uh, uh, you know, I don't see the, the value at this stage. In, if you want to invest in Bitcoin, it, you know, it's quite simple to, to invest in it uh, on its own. Um, you know, it is, a, uh, it is a store of value, I think. Uh, it has the, the same properties as gold in terms of it yeah. being a sound money. Um, uh, it, it has a very small market cap right now. At the moment, it's only about $20 billion, which is a drop in the ocean. And uh, as we see these global macroeconomic issues uh, abound, you know, like negative interest rates and war on cash and 
um, hyperinflation even, uh, I think people are going to look to it uh, as an investment in itself and not necessarily as part of a, a, a portfolio. Well, what kind of growth or track record has it been boasting in terms of returns for investors? Well, over the last year, it's uh, had tremendous returns. Uh, obviously, in its short uh, history, um, there's been a lot of speculative bubbles and uh, um, uh, you know, fundamentals like the news if a central bank decides to uh, come down on it affect the price uh, quite uh, significantly. But uh, uh, more and more people are, are starting to, uh, to be attracted to it as an investment. They are, are buying into it. It's, it means that the, the market is becoming uh, deeper and it's less likely that a strong hand can, can manipulate the markets. Uh, that's what's, what's nice about it. Uh, anybody can, can buy in. And I think that uh, the gains that we've been seeing over the last year, which have been uh, tremendous, um, are just uh, a sign of things to come. Well, that was Lorian Gamarov, who's founder of Banky Moon. And that's where I leave things with you for now. After the break, it's you and your money, so don't go away.